Welcome to Grolix Nights, the Grolix Podcast live show. I'm Randy. I'm Melanie. And I'm Jesse. Hey, it's been a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. What's going on, everybody? And by everybody, I mean us. Hey, you <laughs> two. What's... Hey, we had time off for good behavior. That yeah. doesn't happen ever. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, we got a viewer. What's going on, viewer? Yeah, we're only going out to Facebook this week. Uh, you, We've got the StreamYard branding. Listen. Got this duck, this money duck up here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes it is a money duck. Sometimes you got to you got to scale back, you know what I'm saying? So, first off, hey you two there. How are you guys doing? I'm all right. I'm doing all right. Doing all right. And out there watch people watching, what have you been watching other than us? Time off for bad behavior, Paul says. What? Jasper says, and I'm that guy. I'm not sure which guy, but he's definitely that guy. That guy. He's uh-huh. definitely that guy. I would agree. <laughs> uh, so tonight we haven't been. We've been busy, which is hence the reason we haven't. Like our streams have been. Well, we've only done a couple this month so far, but uh, but we've watched a few things that we're going to talk about. Some kind of exciting things that we're going to. Uh, that I want to talk about anyway. The couple of things I watched, and then no, uh, nothing you were expecting either, <laughs> right? Like there's all sorts of things that I've dropped that people are probably gonna be like, "Hey, Kiefer, what do you think about that new He-Man show?" And it's like, I haven't seen it. Oh, the mm. new, the new one, the, the new that's new not one. for us. That's right. actually not for us, as opposed to one that was for us. Yep. Okay, Paul says. Oh, well, I have been watching Wu Tang. Okay, Wu Tang, He Man, and Turner and Hooch. I've had a full plate. I'm, I've that is, I'm current on Wu Tang. That's the like one show I'm current on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I watched the new episode yesterday, and uh, it's good. I'll, I'll let that derail me for half a second. Something that I noticed this season that I didn't notice the first season: the actor that plays the RZA, like he does the voice in this, this very specific way, and it's. It almost seemed like, I'm like, why did he start doing that? Like, what is that? It sounds, it's weird. It's a weird choice, right? I was watching a Hot Ones, by the way. Thank you, Jesse, for turning me on to that show. Yeah. I've been, uh, that's that's my now go-to to like, let's put something on in the background. It's Hot Ones. Did you watch the Gordon Ramsay one? No, no. Oh, you I have haven't. to. It's so good. Is it? So good. Yes. I, <laughs> yes. I mean, like, he's entertaining anyways, but like, you know... As they get to the end, you know, kind of thing, mm-hmm. it's like he just he just starts swearing, mm-hmm. and Gordon Ramsay is a delight when he starts swearing. Uh, yes, the voice is derailing occasionally. I, I'm not sure what you mean. You were talking about Wu Tang, the uh, oh the yeah, RZA voice. So I was watching Hot Ones with RZA and some other guy. At the time, they were promoting uh, an album the two of them had d- done together. It's uh, not a Wu Tang related thing. I had meant to check it out too. I was curious, but the dude in the show definitely does it too much, a little bit. But I was listening to the RZA talk, and I was like, "Wait, the RZA does kind of talk like that. Not all the time, but he's just got this way. The way he's it sounds. <laughs> the guy in the actor sounds like he's doing bad." narration bad voiceover narration mm-hmm. but then listening to Riza, a little bit he he falls into that cadence sometimes so i'm like okay i guess the guy on on wu-tang an american it was an american saga american epic whatever it is uh isn't totally off base there so mm-hmm. um <laughs> jasper says a show with hot questions and even hotter wings I, I I do love that show. I'd never yeah. even heard of it, and it's huge. Like the, I look, oh, yeah. you look through the videos and the views on it. I'm like, oh my god, everybody knows this show. I'd mm-hmm. never heard it till you they've mentioned got it. some big guests too. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Adris Alba one is a, a lot of fun. When he, he's like, come up with the show. You know how to fight. It was so good. <laughs> anyway, that's not what we're talking. It's a Gary, about. Va- have you seen the Gary Vaynerchuk one? That one's so bizarre no. too. No, that one's crazy. We saw Aubrey Plaza snort some milk. 
Yeah. <laughs> She's always amazing, and she was proper, proper in proper form on that episode. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones. I've, I've, I think I've run through a lot of the people that I was most curious about, and now I'm hitting, like, I guess some of the internet celebrities and the people I, I'm not that familiar with. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not to say I don't know a few internet celebrities. I mean, no of. I don't know any of them right. personally. But <laughs> do they got PewDiePie jokes? <laughs> <laughs> That's a reference I haven't made in a while. No, no PewDiePie. I wonder why. Huh, weird. Weird they wouldn't have him on. It, yeah, it is definitely, man, I don't know. I'm getting old because there is definitely, like, at this point, and it started, I think, maybe a little bit with Pootie Pie, seeing, like, knowing the name and seeing him, uh, like, parodied and then even show up on South Park. And I was like, huh, okay, this Pootie Pie guy, he yells at video games, okay. Um and then there was a small stint where I finally like was watching it for a little bit. Shortly before he got in trouble for dropping the end bomb like twice, um, but I was pretty much done watching him by then anyway. And, uh, but he's even like not even current gen. He's old. He's old. Yeah, he's internet old. Generation. He's old internet now. at this point. Yeah. He's like. <laughs> He's like the internet moves fast. Okay, yeah. he's like uh, I don't he's, know what he's, boy, he's maybe thirty tops. He's, he's like, like super young, but he's old. He's like golden age uh, yeah. internet celebrity, and now people are like into the eighties of the internet celebrityness or something, right? Like, right. it's been generations of celebrities since him. <laughs> it's how the internet does. Mm -hmm. It does. It moves really fast. Was, I was that what? What's her name? Camilio. She's she's gonna be old for TikTok pretty soon here. I don't even. Know uh, she who probably that is. is. She probably is old for TikTok now. Like there's probably new TikTokers that are like who? It happens so fast. Mm -hmm. It's so fast. I mean, it's okay though if like <laughs> if they're kind of disposable personality, then that's fine. I think if you have something good to offer, you stick around for a while. But you know, right. maybe I'm wrong. Or you just eventually drop a slur and get canceled. Seems to be a way a lot of them go. Yeah, yep. You live long enough to see yourself become the villain. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, especially with streaming, right? Like, you can only stream for so long before a little bit of the too real you comes out, I guess. That's not, that's not our problem. We could stream forever and we'd always be fine. Yeah. I don't know. I think my real me tries to slip out a little bit every time. So, <laughs> okay. Our uh, problem is uh, like <laughs> alternate universe doppelgangers. Yeah, yeah. They're the ones that are. I mean, that's a problem. Them. That's yeah. some real problems right there. Um, let's see. I do want to catch up on something Paul was saying. He Man. He Man is actually kind of epic. Uh, he'll say, let's see, blah blah blah. It's a perfect mix of OG He Man for kids and adult occasional. And occasional adult humor, and the animation is on point. Okay, I'll leave it alone now. Are we talking? We're talking about that new He Man that definitely looks like it's for kids, right? Right. Um, mm -hmm. The techno He Man, which when you were reading it, I don't know why, but I thought you were going to say something about the occult, and I'm like, really? They got the occult and He Man? Whoa! But that's oh, probably OG He Man, the occult <laughs> He Man, the techno cult. Yeah, I want more of that. I want. I want. Triclops to just have his own series. Revelation when is, Triclops. When is part two of? Don't know the He Man. I was, that... I was listening to um, Fat Man Beyond too, uh, but it's all basically like talking about stuff like Clerks Three because that's what he's in the midst of doing, right. and then um, like he's kind of kind of moved on from the He Man He Man thing. Um, but I'm sure I'm sure he'll like come back to it. They were talking about the Emmys and whatnot. That was a thing, I guess. Did you guys see that? Like Netflix took home some big awards for once. I did I, see that. There was I seen an art you shared an article in the in Facebook.com oh, slash yes. group yeah. slash Grolix podcast. And <laughs> <laughs> the headline pointed out specifically WandaVision getting snubbed. But at the same time, like if you read the article, I mean it didn't really 
it right. publicly maybe got snubbed, but like it won a bunch of technical awards. They just don't air the technical awards. Oh, they got mm-hmm. awards for okay. What was, what? They just right. didn't get the big awards. They, they didn't, didn't get the yeah. ones that were aired right. publicly, so they were gotcha. snubbed. Oh, but, I didn't realize that. And that's not to say there weren't good, like um, you know the the two leads, Wanda and Vision, mm-hmm. the, or their real names, Paul Bettany and Wanda. Yes, Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth Olsen. Olsen. Yeah. <laughs> totally slipped my mind. Uh, they were good, and they did actually have emotional beats to hit. But like overall, I'm like, WandaVision never. It didn't strike me as the kind of show that was like angling for a best for an actor Emmy, yeah. Emmy or yeah. anything. So they had moments, to, but like not overall. Not <laughs> nothing on par with The Crown, man. Yeah, like sorry. <laughs> and I do love the crown, but I mean, like, what what kind of bummed me out? And and Ted Lasso deserved it, but it was like, man, Cobra Kai, this was supposed to be their year. Give mm-hmm. them an award, yeah. But then Ted Lasso comes in with its brilliant comedy. What is it? I've never even heard of this. Ted Lasso. It's supposed to be this really great comedy, like uh, it's excellent storytelling and whatnot. But it's on a streaming service I don't have. I think it's like on Apple TV. Or oh, something like that, and so oh. I haven't I haven't seen it, but like everybody raves about it. So mm-hmm. J- Jasper says Bettany was the best pick for Jarvis slash Vision. No, he really was. He's, he's great. great. He kind of elevates. He's he's. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, that's kind of the whole thing with a lot of the Marvel movies. They they great casts, mm-hmm. yeah, and it started with getting Robert Downey Jr., who, you know, at this point is now uh, again a super celebrity, but. Bettany is the kind of casting where it's like, oh, he kind of feels like he elevates it. He oh, yeah. feels like he should be above it, but he's not. He's doing it. Mm-hmm. Well, he was just a disembodied voice for how many years? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, now he's the longest uh, tenured person in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because he's been here since, since Interesting. Iron Man 1. You know, I mean, like, he's right. been around. Mm-hmm. Not on screen, but he's been around since the beginning. Do you think it seems like he elevates it because he actually gets to use an accent that isn't uh, American? He doesn't have to play American, even though he's not like <laughs> almost everyone else in superhero movies. Right. right. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but Benedict Cumberbatch, you're going to slum it. <laughs> <laughs> you pretend you're a yank. <laughs> that reminds me. And, and uh, have you have you watched any more of... Uh, what if episodes, Jesse, since we last talked about uh, it? I watched the zombie one. Okay. But that's, yeah. So I I got caught up, caught up, and then uh, it moved on without me. <laughs> okay. Well, assuming... There's just one or two. Like, I know the Killmonger one just came out or whatever. Well, mm-hmm. it's it comes out on what? Wednesdays? I feel mm-hmm. like if it comes out on Wednesdays, we have not watched the most recent one, but we did watch the Killmonger one. Okay. So there's two so there's out two. now. There's two. Yeah, no, I'm two behind then. Um, the Killmonger one, I wanted to... Okay, well, I was going to ask you, but and I know other people have already talked about this. I've seen articles about it like weeks ago, but it's one of the more notable recasting is uh, Tony Stark. Oh, um, yeah. And he was, in, he was in... I mean, he was in the zombie one, but not really as voice. He was in a, another one a little bit. He's in the the killmonger one a lot um he's mm-hmm. one of the main characters in that episode and it's it's so not robert downey oh yeah but is kind of a guy doing robert downey voice a little bit doing a cadence of robert downey and it's not bad but it's weird sure. and it, it uncanny kind valley of, with yeah the, with the face looking as much like him as it does it's it's kind of like illustrates how I mean, I guess I don't know about Lucky, but, you know, I'm sure it costs a lot of money to get as many of the people from the movies back into the voice actor voice roles as mm-hmm. it did as they have. But it hi- highlights like what a good, um, I guess, uh, decision it was to try to get as many people back as possible, because you can't help but feel like, I mean, sh- OK, it's supposed to be Tony Stark, but he's kind of like Dollar Tree Tony Stark, right? right, right. He's got to like. It's not quite really proper Tony was, Stark. Was Steve Evans uh, in the first one? Or was no, that like a, I, I that was a voice actor, and then I think 
the guy who played Hank Pym. That wasn't Michael Douglas. No, yeah. I, so, I but those so. those weren't as jarring though either. Right. For whatever right. reason, just like Robert Downey Jr. has such a specific cadence and a specific thing to his voice that, like, his voice is the character really. Yeah. yeah, and and he's kind of the whole cinematic universe was launched off of him in that as that character, right? Uh, so he was kind of like he had to almost for a long time he had to be in like every movie, even just a little bit, really, or at least it seemed like they felt he needed to be. Right, mm-hmm. um, like Spider Man wasn't going to be good enough on its own, right? right. <laughs> had to cook mm-hmm. cook in Tony Stark. Yeah, which is an interesting choice and make him like integral to like Spider Man's like origin the first in this current big, version. Uh cinematic blockbuster superhero movie really since like Batman. Right. I don't think we really needed Robert Downey Downey Jr. because we had Samuel L. Jackson in all the movies and that was fine for me. Well, I agree, but he hasn't been the lead of any really arguably co-lead like he's a strong co co uh supporting role in um marvel marvel yeah Yeah. but Mm. but that's not what we're talking about is it no what are are we talking about uh well first let's run through a few i guess we are we're just talking about (laughs) things we've watched yeah okay Um, or not watched in my case well i want to mention yeah let's let's jump into because it's maybe the most recent thing that Melanie and I have watched, but we haven't watched all of. So we only watched the first episode, but Why the Last Man is out on Hulu. Mm-hmm. And they dropped like four episodes, and we only had time to watch one, the first episode last week. And I vaguely, vaguely recall reading the first volume, I think it was, for the Grog's mm-hmm. podcast years ago at this point. Um, so there were little details I remembered, but not a whole lot. Melanie, though, read the entire series, and I know mm-hmm. Melanie, you were a huge I, you were a huge I, fan of it. I was. I I actually think I read it twice because I read it all the way through, and then when when you guys read it, I read it. I believe all the way through again. Um, what did you think of the first episode? I kind of wish we had watched more just to get more of your thoughts. Right. It well, it's it's hard to make a term a determination on yeah. just that episode because it's it's. Really, it's just the very beginning. You get introduced to a few of the characters, and you get the gist of what's going on, but you don't really get into it. And part of what makes Why the Last Man great, and I don't know if they are going to do great yet, is the interactions between the people, you know? Um, uh, And that's why about most of the stuff that I like, I like because they have good characters, and and they do interesting things, and they have great dialogue. I was there were some things that I didn't care for about this, but it wasn't anything big. It was just like little stuff that did, doesn't really matter. Um, but I don't think I didn't think they were funny enough because it, it's very humorous. I didn't think they had a whole lot of funny. It was you know a, a big big uh, drama setup, and yeah. it needs that, but but they could add it a little bit more of the funny in there. I think. Yeah, there was very little funny. I would agree. It was very, it feels, and I think this is maybe a pro for it versus a con. Mm -hmm. This is a pro for attracting viewers, potentially. It just, it felt like an ensemble drama series Mm -hmm. with a decent budget, which is, you know, it was, seemed well made. Um, But yeah, there wasn't a lot of that kind of, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's missing a little bit of that so far. No, I had heard that they updated a little bit of the of the virus or, or whatever it is like they um they talk about the fact that um you know, like females can have the y was it the y chromosome that it's attacking is that what the deal is females don't have a y chromosome we have two x's <clears throat> right but like uh people can be born with that so it's like taking out anybody that has the y chromosome and then uh-huh. like the the idea of the uh, presenting as a male, but looking, no, mm. the opposite. Okay. Uh, presenting as a mm-hmm. female, has, but having the Y chromosome or something like that. 
it didn't really get into that yeah we at least since the first episode okay. although it did you know there was like a part where they were in like i'm assuming like a war or maybe not a war room but um like a, a meeting room for politicians and there were like generals and whatnot and and um there came a point where all that was in there was women um and some of them were very masculine women uh in, in you know like um, military uniforms and whatnot um but i don't think it would have you would question whether or not they were you know gotcha. um but but it might be it'll come up later i will see, yeah yeah they there's you get a little bit of like after i think it starts maybe like after like you know you see what's his name um mm -hmm. in like apocalypse world right that's kind of right. it opens there because it's got to show you a bit of this mm -hmm. um him with his monkey yeah it's interesting york. that he has monkey huh um yeah york and then we go to like before three, yeah it's like three weeks earlier oh yeah um the so then it kind of introduces a bunch of the characters but it does <laughs> go up through to like the outbreak starts happening and it does that well and that's specifically like the scene Melanie mentioned where um, because it, it is like a room full of people, you know, it's like senators and st I think the president and stuff like that. Yeah. Just kind of how crazy it would be if you just took like one sex, they're all just going to suddenly violently vomit blood and die and leave the other sex standing there. Like how weird and kind of a horrific that concept is. Mm -hmm. um, seeing it play out in a, like a live action thing, mm -hmm. it, it, it's pretty interesting. It sells that idea mm -hmm. pretty well. Um, well I, I like that it, they haven't necessarily gotten into it, but that's another one of the things that really appeals to me about this, the book in general, because it's not just that, you know, one of the one whole sex is gone. It's the sex that in general, and for most of the world is kind of the ruling sex. Right. So it's all the patriarchy. Yeah, all these positions that make decisions that are in control of their things are gone and nobody knows what to do, you know? Yeah. So that's a big part of it too, I think. But yeah. One other thing that I'm like slightly worried about, and m mostly because of Randy, but I've read, like I said, I've read it twice, so I know the characters. It didn't seem like you knew who the characters were and how they were related to each other, even yeah. though it, like, it did slightly mention them a couple times. Um so I don't know if people are going to be able to follow, you know, who's who and and the connections and whatnot. Well, with one case, it was I didn't recognize a person from an earlier scene, but they were in a different setting and different clothes. And sometimes I have sometimes once in a while that tricks me. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a female character and she I don't she just oh. I don't know. She looked. I'm just no. I'm just for reference as I to know, like who, who it was. It was a female character, and she just has a very, like, she's she's a very attractive looking person, but like, also very like, standard look, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I didn't realize it was a not the same. I, I thought it was a different person. Mm -hmm. Um. And, but then the other thing was just like information that I didn't know, but the series did end up giving giving to me like a uh, Yurik. Um, knowing he was the son of, you know, whatever character that we're seeing in other scenes. Eventually, mm -hmm. they outright say it. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize that was the case. Um, but you had that information from the comic. And I didn't remember that from the comic. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it's I think it's OK. OK. Yeah. And we'll, we'll find out. We'll watch more. <laughs> I'm not racist or sexist. Everyone just looks the same all the time. <laughs> right. Everyone. People are way too common it's true it is. her no, hair was like, drastically different okay hair I, is a big thing i am oh, yeah. i am a, a very white girl but i used to drive a, a school bus full of little white girls and they all looked like the same little blonde white girl to me so it, oh. really, it, it's, it's, it doesn't yeah. have anything to do with <laughs> it's a real thing it was like wait no you're not that one sorry not that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah. Are you supposed to be on this bus? Oh, wait, yes. Yes, you are. Your bus pass says so. Yeah. And you don't let them cut their hair or change something. And I'm like, wait, who are you? Oh. Hey, I remember once when I was very young watching, I think, uh, Terminator. And mm -hmm. at a certain point, Arnold, like, gets his eyebrows burnt off or whatever. And I'm like, is that the same guy? Because... <laughs> <laughs> 
you take away that just a little feature, it makes a yeah. huge difference. Oh, and I'm just got huge. You're eyebrows, a different person yeah. now, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Arnie has prominent eyebrows, so yeah. If you want to trick me, shave your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> so you fact, take a w- weird reason to like <laughs> shave your eyebrows. Like, well, I needed to. I needed to fool Randy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to do it. <laughs> you like run into my apartment, steal something, run out, shave your eyebrows, and walk back Who in. Who was and be like, that? Where'd that other person Why? go? Why did they do that? By the way, you look weird. Something about you, I can't figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh. So yeah, I, I, we'll watch more of the show, and I'm sure we'll have more to say later. Uh, let's let's jump over to Jesse. What's something you watched? So I just thought I'd watch like some weird stuff on HBO Max, apparently. Uh, And uh, I don't know. I think it was under like, you might like this, you know, like it was recommending Mm -hmm. me things. And uh, Kung Fu was on there. I was like, wait a minute. What is this? And I think I think I vaguely knew that they were rebooting the Kung Fu series with David Carradine. And I was like, all all right, maybe I'll maybe I'll check this out. And I was reading the synopsis and the synopsis looks fine. Right. But mm-hmm. then, uh, then I start watching this thing, and it it uh, it feels like a CW show. And come to find out, oh yeah, it was a CW show. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it felt like uh, like Gossip Girl or something like that, uh, but with a kung fu storyline just like pegged on there. So like that that basic uh, premise of the original kung fu, which is like, so Kwai Chang Kane was he trained in a Shaolin monastery or whatever. Right. And then, but then something happens and he has to come back to America to find his son, that kind of thing. None of that Chinese girl goes over to, uh, to China and trains in a Shaolin monastery to get out of an arranged marriage and a lifestyle that her mom was deciding for her join this monastery to become like a Kung Fu you know, practitioner, and then uh, comes has to come back because of things that happened over there. And but then, like the 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 majority of the story is basically just her being uh, a Chinese American woman and dealing with her family issues. Like that's the majority of it. But then there's also B plot of I have to find this mystical kung fu sword. Weird. Couldn't she just like? Go to college or or rebel or something. Why you got to learn kung fu? That's what I mean. It's you know makes makes it's for a TV show. Kind of kind of jarring. It's kind of weird. It's a strange B plot. It's like uh, it's like if the craft with the you know like way back in the day, mm-hmm. if the craft were more about their relationships than about magic. Mm-hmm. It was like oh, and I did a spell. Right, right. <laughs> it's more like that, you know. Like at least with the craft, it was kind of like cohesively happening at the same time. Like, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. I'm dating this guy, and it's really weird. Oh, also, apocalyptic magic is happening. Not like really, really, really family, family, family. Oh, there's this spell over here. In case, yeah, we forget. yeah, that's lame. Then mm-hmm. you should change the title to. But I only watched the pilot. Oh, okay. so like the pilot is kind of all over the place, and it has to give you a certain flavor. Of, right. of what the family dynamic is, because I'm sure it's important. Maybe that becomes less and the Kung Fu becomes more. But in this first one, it was more like this, where it's like, yeah, there's Kung Fu, I swear. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's characteristic of the CW, too, though, because, like, um, Arrow and uh, what's the other, Archer, they both, are, like, made up drama, like, between, you know, my, my sister said this, and my girlfriend said that, and my her dad said this, you know, uh, stupid stuff that really has nothing to do with anything you want to watch, but they, like, lean on that so heavy yeah, Arrow, rather than making, you know, an, a good um, action, you know, show. Or whatever. Arrow and The Flash, I think, is what you meant. Um, okay, yeah. You said Archer, which is Oops. a, a <laughs> oh, different yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think I feel like Arrow a little bit more. So I mean, The Flash, yes, for sure. But and I have it's been, I've fallen out of that show, all those shows for years now. Yeah, I, I think Arrow's over now, right? Um, yes. Yep. But I feel like Arrow more so because The Flash would have that stuff going on, and it didn't tie it in very well. But they still almost always had like Monster of the Week type or Villain of the Week th- structure. 
Um, but yeah, I agree. I had I had debated watching this Kung Fu because I seen it, but and Paul had said we talked about it in January. So it's likely we, that we brought it up. It was probably a news bullet, and we were like, oh, "Okay, I think well, I retain whatever. any of that? <laughs> I don't right. retain any of it." Um, <laughs> that's how I could do like Tekken movie news, uh, right? <laughs> exactly. Twelve, thirteen years removed. <laughs> like, hey, there's a new. Wait, why are they saying it's gonna be on DVD? Are they still promoting DVDs? They still sell them though. So. I anyway. think I vaguely remembered talking about it, and I was like, oh, that's right. I think we did, like, mention this or something. Uh, yeah, I think that we said it was going to happen, but... Right. Uh, I, yeah, and if, you know, especially news like that, a lot of times that doesn't always pan out, um, just because that's mm -hmm. how the entertainment industry works. But, yeah, I was looking at this on HBO Max, and I was like, Kung Fu, man, that show... Both both of that shows they those are classics, right? Um, well, both of, okay. Maybe the legend continues is not so classic. <laughs> not right? so classic, but that's actually what introduced me or reintroduced me. Like I I knew of Kung Fu, but never right. really watched it. And then I saw Kung Fu: The Legend Continues. I was like, this is awesome. And then I went back. I was like, oh, this is better actually. Yeah. And I watched the movie with Brandon Lee uh, and David Carradine. So, but. So I was curious about this, and I looked. I was like, eh, and then I looked online, and I lo was looking into it, and just like, then I seen, oh, oh, it was a CW show, and yeah. I seen some stills, and I was like, no, I know what that is. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I need that. It's a little disappointing to hear that it seems like it leaned so much heavier into the CW tone than Kung Fu. Yeah, well, and even the Kung Fu part of it is so CW kind of over the top, where it's like, like the original Kung Fu wasn't like m mystical. I mean, um, I suppose there was a little bit of that, but not like to this degree where it's like, I couldn't hold the sword because I didn't have enough power or I wasn't its rightful holder. And so it burned oh. me. And so now I have a mark on my hand from where I held the sword. So it's oh, like really? really leaning into this mysticism, like almost to the point where I was like, is this racist? <laughs> <laughs> like, is that is that too much? The I one where they didn't kick on. out the Chinese guy that actually created the show with right, the white guy right. in the role. Yeah, is it was less like, racist? Yeah, the I one don't from know. The 60s? Yeah, or, yeah the 70s I know. It's like, wait a minute, did they just make this show racist too? <laughs> you know, yeah, you fix one 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 element, you gotta you gotta kind of there is a balance. You've got to right. maintain a racist balance, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's, that's Hollywood's rule, not mine. I'm not even yeah, in Hollywood. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And all uh, the family stuff felt so much more real and grounded, and then, then you had this weird this weird kung fu mysticism. It's like mm -hmm. they... Yeah. That's, that is... Tell, tell me about Kun Lun, uh, Danny Rand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, is, that is them being afraid to, like go full kung fu to like actually just do like a uh not street level but down to earth kung fu mm -hmm. take like oh, it's, kids are going to be bored we need some magic some fantasy right. elements that kind of sucks uh mm -hmm. paul, paul also said oh yeah i also watched malignant on hbo max i have not watched that yet but i will mm -hmm. i'm curious about it yep sorry i didn't mean to i just want to throw that comment out there mm-hmm M malignant the i know he's a big like horror guy and uh he's responsible for kind of uh, a current crop of super um profitable horror movies i do not like the director of malignant uh it's the saw guy who did the first saw and i know he's you know i'm not a super fan of a lot of his movies though even though he is a horror guy but <laughs> I seen that and I was like, what is this? And I hopped on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, I usually take that with a grain of salt. And it's reviewed moderately. But if you read every review, rather regardless they reviewed it rather the excuse me, regardless they gave it a good score or a bad score, every review is the same. It's a bad movie, it's a mess, and then the end happens and it's amazing. <laughs> and it's ridiculous, and it redeems everything. The people who gave it Fresh Tomatoes and Rotten Tomatoes all said that same thing. I'm like, I gotta watch that. What is yeah. that? Yeah. So I'm curious about it. Mm -hmm. that You're muted, Jesse. 
<laughs> Went and totally redeemed yourself. <laughs> right, right. That reminds uh, me real quick. I wanted to hit one news thing because I didn't actually have a news story associated with it, but I know it's a thing. Midnight Mass. Speaking of, talk about horror directors that are known for horror, but they're awesome. Uh, Mike Flanagan, yeah. new series on Netflix. It's out tonight or tomorrow. It's out tomorrow. So like this morning at, or this coming morning at like 2 p.m., 2 a.m. it'll drop. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited hope, for it. Me too. I hope it's good. I, the trailer that I, we saw looked too Stephen Kingy for me, but he's done really good with everything he's touched so far. So I'm hoping he continues his, uh, his streak. Yeah, I've been hyped about it since I watched it because all the series he's done for Netflix have been great. Hey, Savannah, what's going on? That's okay, you're here. Um, all the series he's done for Netflix are great. Uh, he makes good horror movies. And uh, this apparently is a, a series, a story that he's had with him for a long time that he's been trying to get made, whatever. So mm -hmm. he's... It's a personal story, so you know. I you know. I guess that could maybe be red flagged, but um, it sounds cool. The trailer is not. It it is not a wow you trailer. I mm -hmm. was not wowed by the trailer, but it doesn't matter. I'm pumped to watch this show. So, um, Paul says it's an homage to Italian style horror. If you like over the top Italian spaghetti horror, this ramps it up times one thousand so, intentionally. Oh, malignant. Okay. Interesting. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry, yeah. No, it's, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that does not sound like a Mike Flanagan's deal. If he went like that, uh, mm -hmm. that, okay, I'd be down for that too, but that'd be interesting. Mike Flanagan, listen, he made a prequel to Ouija, and it was good. Yeah. <laughs> that movie, the Ouija movie, is a horrible, terrible movie, and he made a prequel to it and actually made it kind of good. So that's talent. Mm-hmm. And he did a sequel to the The Shining, and it doesn't suck. So, I I really like it. I know not everybody does, but I really liked it. Um. Okay, I'm gonna jump back over to what we're. I feel like what we've been watching, even though we haven't been watching much, is gonna take the whole episode. Uh, Melanie and I watched The Green Knight. Mm -hmm. uh, the Green Knight is a 2020. It's a new movie. Um, I don't even know how to explain it. An epic fantasy adventure based on the timeless Arthurian legend, The Green Knight tells the story of Sir... Is it G Gawain? Yeah, yeah, I think so. King Arthur's reckless and headstrong nephew who embarks on a daring quest to confront the eponymous Green Knight, a gigantic emerald-skinned stranger and tester of men, who also, by the way, made me wish there was a proper live-action Swamp Thing something. Mm -hmm. Speaking of James Wan not doing things right. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we watched The Green Knight. I gave it four and a half stars. I kind of love this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, so here, here's all you need to know. It's, you know, Arthur, it's a, it's a fantasy movie, but take The Shining, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, and The Witch that came out a few years ago, The, the Vivitch, put them together and make it an adventure movie, some a fantasy movie somehow. That's this movie. Mm -hmm. It's, and that was, the trailer had intrigued me so much because it had that, it, the trailer is appropriate. Uh, at least the one I seen a while ago. If you're curious as to like the tone of it, watch the trailer. That is the tone of the movie. Everything's uh, foggy and mm -hmm. moist and muddy. And it just uh -huh. looks miserable all the time. The tone feels like uh, a, a weird 70s horror movie playing on TV during the day while you're stuck at home sick. That's the tone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but at the same time, there's a fox thing that follows him around and might eventually talk. Maybe there's giants. What does the fox say? <laughs> I I don't remember, but he says <laughs> things. Um, the, the, is that Excalibur, the sword? I think it is. Like, mm -hmm. so it's a fantasy movie, but it's handled like uh, an a, a atmospheric. Oh, hey, Randall Andrews, what's going on? Um, 
the Green Knight is what I was talking about. Let me. I meant to pull up my screen just so people could see. Hey, I bet it has a great soundtrack, and you could find out more about soundtracks on Randy Andrews' podcast, Soundtrack Alley. Right. Right. Um, What is... The soundtrack is interesting. It's... It's atmospheric. There's a lot of, like, moody choir, like a female choir sounds Mm -hmm. with occasional weird low uh synth yeah i'm telling you it's a 70s horror movie dressed up as a adventure movie (laughs) or a fantasy movie um it's yeah you feel like the whole time like you're scared but you're so unsure of what's happening that you don't really know why you're scared but you are that's the, it's on e it's it's unnerving it has a constant yeah. sense of unease right mm-hmm. up till the end from the beginning to the end and it feels like you at no point know where it's going but at the same time there's a couple times when it tries to pull a thing where you're like wait no no and when you get to where it's going you're like oh well okay i kind of seen that but it, like i didn't ever really know for sure i don't know it's hard to explain yeah. um it's interesting because it does take the like traditional like hero's journey character arc at a certain point towards the beginning of this i was like oh okay he's off on an adventure he's a hero's journey i know okay i know what the deal is now and while i wasn't wrong the movie handles it in a much more interesting and realistic way and at Mm -hmm. times almost meta way to where at one point he's actually having a conversation with a character and he's like so uh, you're headed to do this thing, you know, and it might be, it's most likely certain death. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, but once I get there, you know, I'll be a hero. He's like, oh, you just got to go do this one thing. And then you'll be a, a a hero. You'll be lauded across the land and you'll be like a whole new person. He's like, yeah. He's like, just this one thing. And he's like, yeah, well, that's, that's amazing. I wish I could just go do one thing and it completely changes who I am. I hope we don't miss who you were or something like that. Just calling out the idea of like just this one act completely changes him as a character, which is kind of how a lot of stories handle this thing, especially when it comes to like the whole not scoundrel, but kind of like, you know, he's, he's, he's like a bar fly, kind of a lounge about that whole like from that to hero. Mm-hmm. It's usually so kind of flimsy, and this handles it so much more kind of realistically, mm-hmm. which is pretty interesting. Yeah. It is. It's it's really good. Yeah, I'm glad I picked it. You did pick it. I know. Well, I was. You he said black or green because it was either Black Widow or Green Knight, and I'm like green. Yeah. Right. Yep. Right. That was that was our choices that night. And that's kind of uh, like this was the other movie that was coming out, you know, at that time too. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it was like, whoa, what about this? This looks interesting. You know, this isn't the blockbusters that we're getting. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to, let's see. Do they have any images of the effects when there's, I mean. I was going to ask, sure there's... is it Pan Labyrinth style? Because it gives, that trailer gives you a Pan's Labyrinth kind of vibe. I'd say a little bit in that it's, definitely leans into like a horror fantasy feel although technically i mean i guess it does it it feels like a horror movie but at no point seems like it's trying to be a horror movie it's Mm -hmm. just like that's the atmosphere it has Mm -hmm. um yeah even like the the scary character i suppose in in the whole thing he doesn't really seem all that menacing at all you know He's kind of got charisma. <laughs> like, yeah. You don't see him very often. The Green Knight. But like when you do, you're like, I like that guy. <laughs> and mm-hmm. he's the scary character. Uh, he's probably more charismatic than everyone else. Um, <laughs> it, it's hard to... It doesn't... It, it does have fantasy elements, like I said. But it's the fantasy elements aren't presented like Pan's Labyrinth, where Pan's Labyrinth is like dark fantasy and it leans into the fantasy. This, for the most part, looks real. I mean, it looks realistic and grounded, and it's it's stylized, but not like not like a Guillermo del Toro or like uh, Edward Scissorhands like super stylized way. Sure, um, it looks a little bit more grounded to the point to where 
I'll, this is a slight spoiler just because I didn't know it was in there, but it's probably in the trailers. He does come across giants, and they don't, they just look like huge people, and that makes it so creepy. And that scene <laughs> is the weirdest, creepiest scene. And it even does the thing where, like, the camera, like, this big, like, pan, uh, what is, I guess it, they probably shot it on a drone flying forward shot, flips over, and it's just like, yeah, no, I get it. I feel like the world is upside down at this point. Everything is weird, and he just uh, seen a bunch of howling giants walking around. Uh, they kind of have, I don't know, it, it, almost like Attack on Titan-like creepiness, but then once you get a better look, you're like, no, they just kind of look like people, and that makes it weird because they don't have the like appropriate giant proportions. Anyway. Okay. It's good. You should watch it if, if you like that kind of stuff. So the green knight gets a green light. Mm-hmm. Four and a half. I can't remember why not five. Probably just because it's... Because it's not Pulp Fiction? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's not It's not Pulp Fiction. If you're, expe if you're going into it expecting Pulp Fiction, don't. Wrong. Mm -hmm. You're wrong. I, I know why. It's because it's dirty that's why it does it feels it feels wet <laughs> it does Ooh. wet every moist. scene you feel moist yes mm -hmm. yes Ugh. and and muddy it just feels wet mm -hmm. and muddy and, and there's a lot of times where they're like roaming around or where he's like going through the countryside and uh somebody's messaging me okay and he's going through the countryside and there's like ruins of castles and melanie's like why why are those castles ruined? Like, what happened to those? I'm like, those are that's 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 production value. They probably they just got those old castles laid around all over, over wherever they shot this. So they're just like, yeah, put it in the background. That's something we don't mm -hmm. have to build. Yeah, <laughs> walk by that a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Um, yeah, it does have some. I, I can't get into it. I'll stop. Hey Jesse, let's ping pong over to you. Oh, all right, all right. Uh, I in my little binge of hbo max shows uh i decided to check out uh an anime i haven't watched an anime first of all in a long in a long time like i can't even tell you what the last one i watched was maybe probably attack on titan i tried tried to watch some of that and maybe right. gave it an episode or two uh and enjoyed it just didn't hook me enough for me to keep going kind of thing mm -hmm. and no. this is probably similar i don't know uh but it's called berserk and it was recommended to me by someone on my TikToks, and uh, and I was like, I'll, I'll try your crazy berserk, and uh, it's it's crazy. It's like uh, <laughs> it's it's like set in more of a like a British Isle English medieval times kind of thing. Like it starts mm -hmm. in a you know like a tavern type of deal, and then um, but it's got things like fairies and. Uh, like demon spirits and whatnot and then uh like it's it's very obviously anime you know like you, even the even the characters have kind of an uh like an asian look to them and whatnot but then then it kicks into this bizarre heavy metal riffs like whenever the action gets going it's like i don't know i mean like it's it's kind of incredible and also like perplexing because it's like all these disparate elements thrown together and you'd think like, no, this doesn't make any sense. How could this possibly work? But he is like, he is like a very heavy metal kind of like, I don't know if he's half demon or, or a fallen angel or, or what they, they like make it kind of vague in the first episode, but he's got this mark and this mark just attracts the demons. I'll, you'll never be safe around me. And if you, you come around me and you get, killed it's not really my problem because mm -hmm. the world is hard or something like that and but then like oh metal riff kill everyone mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of stuff i was like i don't know it was cool uh it was di definitely action-packed and dynamic it was intriguing um i don't know i would but I'm, I'm intrigued enough to maybe give it another episode i don't know it's it's interesting and i don't know if that's if this is the case with with that uh, this show specifically, but it makes me think of some of the Netflix like anime productions where you can tell that they're definitely joint uh, 
country productions to where like oh, yeah, yeah it looks like anime it's got the production style it's got some of the anime elements but then like on the story side there's definitely some western conventions in there that you don't yeah. you, you don't usually see in anime and it's so weird it's it's not it's not bad and it's not to say anime i you know they've borrowed from western conventions a lot but it's strange it's strange to see that mishmash um, mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's the case with this show, but that's what it made me think when you're describing it just now. I mean, like they're in chariots and they have like buckboard, um, you know, covered wagon kind of stuff. And I was like, what is going on with this? And yet he's like, got, he slouched down and he's like, don't talk to me. <laughs> don't talk mm-hmm. to me. I'm going to I'm going to sleep and then I'm going to have a dream and then I'm going to stab this thing on my head. It's an incubi. <laughs> 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 because they're attracted to the mark I bear. Mm-hmm. It, it, rem- it sounds similar to other anime that I've watched before, uh, but even though they were actiony, they didn't necessarily go heavy metal though. Like this go just leans into it and just goes full heavy metal riffs. And there's like, his name is like guts or something. <laughs> it's it's, it's like the most ridiculous anime name. And then there's literally a song that's like, blood and guts, blood and guts. And I was like, what's happening? Keep going. I don't know. I thought you were going to say, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have guts. You gotta have guts. The crag. Okay. <laughs> the aggro crag? <laughs> yes. What a, what a 90s show that was. Right? The aggro crag. <laughs> oh. That's a great name, honestly. I mean, like, really... you, you don't forget a name like the aggro crag. Sorry, I didn't mean to segue into Nickelodeon movies. <laughs> <laughs> Salute your shorts. Um I was actually just talking about David Denome with somebody earlier today. Yep, Nickelodeon, they're weird stuff. <laughs> yeah. Flipping gnomes. All the time. I don't remember what YouTube channel it was. I was watching it. The, this guy's popped up. A, the actor who played the Ard, played Artie, the strongest man in the world, and Pete, Pete, and... Wait, was it Pete and Pete? Pete, Pete, and Pete? There's only two Petes. Yeah. Why was I thinking there's three Petes? So you could repeat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess. Uh... But he's he's you know very active actor and he's in lots of modern things and I don't know what channels they are but I love whatever YouTube channels I watch on the regular because recently he's popped up in two or three different videos where somebody referenced him and they always reference him as the strongest man in the world and I love it and every time I'm like yes Pete Pete was the greatest oh man Savannah spill your guts Eureka's Eureka's castle all real monsters. Sorry, it doesn't matter. I was just gonna say, um, coward, the, or right, courage the cowardly dog. That one. Oh yeah, yeah. Did Did you know that's based on like a real thing? There's a place in New Mexico, uh, and there's a, a couple that live down this farmhouse that is the farmhouse in the in the cartoon, um, and one they were complaining about paranormal stuff happening, and then one day people went out to check on them and they were gone, and the dog was the only one left there, and he was all freaked out. <laughs> that's what the cartoon is. So based dark. On. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Savannah says Pete's first steps were on the ceiling. That's the kind of show that was. Um, that's yeah, Melody. Melody laughs at my sense of humor sometimes. She laughs at the things I laugh at, but not at the things I laugh at. She laughs I laugh at, at your. Me. I laugh at your enjoyment oh, of the sure. like how much you really enjoy the things that you think are funny. That that yeah. makes me laugh. And I feel like some of the more oddball things are, it's definitely kind of that Pete and Pete sensibility of like, why is it funny? I don't, it's, it's not, it's just weird. It's just absurd. Um, Mm -hmm. Pete and Pete, I felt like always kind of did that right. Uh, Other things try too hard. Mm -hmm. Paul says he's been binging all real monsters on Paramount plus Savannah also gives a nod to salute your shorts. Hey, it had the red-headed kid from Terminator 2. Uh, I was wondering what happened to him in Terminator 2. Well, he went to camp. <laughs> Actually, I, I feel like that was after, but I, I don't know. Um, Oh, Hey Dude. Yeah, okay, I remember Hey Dude. Wait, was he in Hey Dude or was he in Salute Your Shorts? 
doesn't matter. It's irrelevant, and a large percentage of the audience that might could possibly watch this or hear this doesn't even know what we're talking about at this point. Mm-hmm. That yep. was uh, a while ago. Yep. Indeed it was. Um. Okay, we're coming up on an hour. Real quick, I don't have a lot of stories, and only really one of them is super notable. And you'd say it's super... Mario, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I could I couldn't segue in there. You should have done the Italian horror connection from. Oh, you're right. You're right. You know what's really Italian horrible? Super Mario <laughs> Brothers. Oh, this means. Oh man, this means eventually I'm gonna have a reason to watch that. Uh, the super cut or whatever. The super, yeah, the direct, the quote unquote director's the cut or the Snyder cut of <laughs> Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, that I downloaded from archive.org yes. forever ago. <laughs> oh man, uh, super. So Nintendo had their big Nintendo Direct thing, which if if I'm always like, if it's not related to Mario Maker, I don't care. I don't have a Nintendo, but it's related to Super Mario Brothers. Uh, super Mario Brothers movie. Gets release date, all star cast announced. <laughs> and at first, I was like, "Are they going to try it again?" Wait, Super Mario again. Brothers All Star? Yeah, oh yeah, that's definitely the uh, the article I pulled up specifically is from ComingSoon.net, and I oh. that's I'm sure that's where they that's made what that they were connection. referencing. Yeah. Um. You know what though? Scared. They're scared. It's going to be animated. Of course, it's going to be animated. You want to do it right? You try live action again. Let's see how that works. Do it. <laughs> yes. You want your movie to be remembered <laughs> 20 years on and people are downloading the unreleased uh, work <laughs> print right. of it from yeah. archive.org. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you do live action and you cast and you put a couple of nut balls behind the camera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good um, luck recasting Dennis Hopper, though. <laughs> right. Who's your Cooper? <laughs> right? Coop, Cooper. Your Cooper. Cooper. Your Cooper Trooper. Your Bowser. Cooper. I mean Koopa. Okay, so but it does have an all star voice cast. I'm so, Chris Pratt. He's gonna be Pratt? Mario. What? what? <laughs> no. You know it's gonna be good when that's the first one up. Well, who's Mario? Who else? You know, famous Italian. I just see, I, I just see him like like standing in front of like <laughs> In front of Koopa Troopas, just like little turtles, just wandering around him, and he's just like, like whispering to them, like in Jurassic <laughs> World, like Jurassic World is like, no, blue, blue. We're just friends. wait, you're gonna see, you're gonna see. At <laughs> That's least. the connection, the dinosaur connection. He's like calling back to the first, uh, the, the original one. It's like, mm-hmm. no, follow, follow me. I'm on a motorcycle now. <laughs> I'd be the old spice guy of Mario Brothers. I Look, guarantee I'm a horse. A, a, at least a couple of people are putting together a rough animation version of that for YouTube already. Oh, I <laughs> hope gonna so. See, we're going to see that a couple times. I oh, think. good. <laughs> well, from what I hear, he's he's good at imitating. So maybe, yeah, maybe he will only suck a little bit. Oh God, people are people are weird it's about me. the accents anymore, though. Especially like Italian. I, Italian, I'm sorry, Melanie. Mm. Italian it's wrong. It's wrong. accents, like you no know, people, people kind of get offended about that. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Do they just say like, "Yeah, screw it," and lean into it, or what? Um, Charlie Day as Luigi. Really? Charlie what? Day. I need to see. Like from "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia." Yes. Yep. Oh my God. <laughs> So yeah. they're so they're really they're really gonna give Luigi his day in this movie. Clearly, yeah, he's gonna have a Charlie day. Yeah. Are they just gonna like bring a bunch of people in and have them improv stuff? Because if that's what they're gonna do, it's gonna be weird. No, no, you know, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be <laughs> it's probably gonna be some like super Disneyized like very by the numbers family animated thing. Okay, well, I'm just saying, you know, it's always sun, sunny in Philadelphia, Parks and Rec, they're, they're very, you right, know. Right, right. Mm. Well, maybe, but I, I don't know. I feel like Nintendo's probably, maybe it's been long enough, they're just like, well, we don't care. But I feel like 
there's a reason there haven't been like any other Mario movies since Super Mario Brothers mm -hmm. uh, in the 90s. They, Nintendo was like, never again. Never again. <laughs> what mm -hmm. is this? Mm -hmm. So I would imagine they're pretty uh they're gonna they're being pretty hardcore on like the script and stuff maybe but then again you know they confused donkey and monkey once upon a time so maybe they just are like let's just let the americans handle it well i i think that i feel like that's a name that came from us anyway i don't know that that necessarily like translated the same over there i could be wrong anna taylor joy as princess peach Sure. Jack Black as Bowser. So that's our I'm kind of. Book. I'm kind of okay with that, right? Uh, Keegan Michael Key as Toad. <laughs> what? Oh. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. See, I feel like they should have swapped those two. There's your donkey. Like, Kong. like Seth mm -hmm. Rogen should be Toad, and give give him the better role of Donkey Kong. You know, who's Kamek? Do I is he a Donkey Kong Country person? I don't know this Kamek. Oh, oh Paul nails it. Paul nailed it there. They should have had Charlie Danny Day DeVito. and Danny DeVito. Right. Like, okay, Kamek is the wizard. Okay, weird. I've never viewed him as like a major character, but I guess um, Kevin Michael Richardson as Kamek, Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong, <laughs> what? And Sebastian Maniscalc, the one like looks maybe like an Italian name. <laughs> Whatever, somebody is Spike. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it wrong. I'm gonna make a prediction based on this casting alone. It's gonna suck. Mario's traditional voice actor, Charles um, Martinet, Martinet, will also be involved and have, quote, surprise cameos in the movie, end quote. No, you make him Mario. It's mm -hmm. okay. yeah, it's, That's Mario. It, How are you not gonna have that guy? It's like <sighs> having Alan Oppenheimer as Moss Man and then killing him in the first episode. Spoilers. But, but but no, no, Chris Pratt. Chris Pat Pratt will be a better Mario. You know, they're all going to go there. They're going to get stoned. They're going to, uh, <laughs> they're going to take like five thousand more cuts of it than they need to because they're going to ramble. And they're, does they're Seth Rogen stoned. even do that anymore though? <laughs> I don't even yeah, know I if think he, so. Does he? Oh, okay. But to my knowledge, I may, I may be wrong, but he looked. He lost some weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he looked like he lost a lot of weight quickly. Mm -hmm. He was on a episode of VFX Artist Reactor or, or whatever it was that mm -hmm. they do on Corridor Crew most of the time now. And, uh, yeah, he looked not rough, but, yeah, a little rough. Maybe it's just age. but mm -hmm. He still laughs horribly. <laughs> You know what? He's older than me, I'm sure. So I'm not going to say I'm holding up better than Seth Rogen, who somebody once said I kind of look like mm -hmm. about 10 something years ago. So, mm -hmm. Sexy Beast. <laughs> oh, yeah. When, when women hear Sexy Beast, they think Seth Rogen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh... Especially 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, there was a trailer out i did not share the trailer for you guys i because i just skipped over it myself the main thing is there's an i know what you did last summer amazon series coming the trailer oh. is out for it and i was <laughs> kind of curious like we were clamoring for <laughs> right also didn't realize the movie originally like that's a book from the 70s it was based on a book from the oh. 70s i didn't know really? that. Huh. didn't know it um but it looks like i mean i don't know what's in the book but this definitely looks like a modern version of the 90s slasher. Um, mm -hmm. And the only really reason I mentioned it is because, and I know there's been a few that I haven't seen, like the Scream series, I have no interest in that. But Melanie, Melanie and I were watching the show Slasher for a while, and I actually kind of really liked the slasher genre in a series format. Mm -hmm. I feel like they, uh, with proper writing, 
gives them in, like time to do interesting things with characters mm -hmm. and it, it changes the stakes where like in the case of the show slasher yeah most characters are still unlikable like they tend to be in slasher shows but you kind of get so much more about the characters so that there's actually stakes when they inevitably get killed um mm -hmm. So the slasher thing format in a series or the slasher genre in the in a TV series format is interesting. So that's why I mentioned it in the first place. So mm -hmm. otherwise, it looked very modern. So it like very bright and shiny and new. <laughs> so mm -hmm. and there's all these young people and I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you cast them? <laughs> I want to see 45 year olds playing teenagers. Darn it. Right. Tom Holland is my Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's Til a teenager he's... for real. Till he looks too old. Yeah. He's like ridiculously old, too. Like for what he's playing. He's playing a, you know, like a high schooler. How... Oh, I'm curious. How old is he? He's got to be like almost 30 or something. Yeah, but how old was. Uh... Leonardo DiCaprio before he looked like an adult. Right. Uh, how old is he now? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and now he just looks like a haggard teen. Um, he's Tom Holland is 25, uh, which okay. is significantly, it's not that old, but it is significantly <laughs> older than what he looks. Right. He still has like, you know, baby face and he's like DiCaprio. And I think this is part of it is like kind of a small frame. Like he's, mm -hmm seems small so. yeah <laughs> we'll have two angry actors on my door someday right <laughs> and i'll have to look down and they'll be like who's small now <laughs> <I'm> like, still <laughs> you. <laughs> you're still short <laughs> okay that's a weird aside <laughs> <laughs> um well we still got another week who knows if we're streaming next week? It kind of depends on how we feel. We've all been right. uh, kind of busy, so um, maybe. But I know this, in October, uh, since it's the best month of the year, mm -hmm. kind of. The weather sucks sometimes, but other than that, it's the best. Um, we'll be revisiting, in a way, our Monster of the Week series, in which we uh, previously we picked... A monster every week and we'd be like okay this week frankenstein and then we each watch something or read something related to frankenstein and then we talk about it blah 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 well since we ran through most of the major monsters uh decided to like loosen it up a little bit and we're gonna go horror subgenres. that way we have a wide variety but we can still like work within the same i don't know subgenre. Mm -hmm. uh and I threw it to Savannah, who is our $10 a month Patreon supporter. You, too, can dictate what we do with the show. Yeah. Interesting way to put it. By visiting... It's an interesting way to cat dance around the point. <laughs> yes. Join our cat dancing tier. There's perks. Like, we'll listen to your suggestions. We're not mm -hmm. legally obligated to do them, but we'll listen to them. And in the case of Savannah, she has good suggestions, so we've been trying to follow them. Um Go to patreon.com slash podcast if you want to help support the show. You definitely should. A couple more and uh, a couple more. If we had a, you know, just a few more at the cat dancing tier, you wouldn't have to look at that ugly Powered by StreamYard logo anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Creepy S duck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and her suggestion, I asked her uh, what her favorite horror subgenres sub were. She threw out two. We're going to go with one for the first one. And I feel like it'll be one of the more fun ones. Um, comedy horror, which is definitely its own subgenre. And she pointed mm -hmm. out, she's like, specifically she likes the comedy horror that, like, embrace both. That don't, like, it's not just comedy with maybe some horror themes. And she right. threw out uh, Shaun of the Dead. And I can't remember the other one. Another one that were perfect examples of, like, yeah. They're great so comedies. Like Army, of, Army of Darkness kind of thing, where there's yeah, or is that? We're not gonna. I feel like we're not gonna be too strict. Okay. Uh, some people, some people would argue Army of Darkness is no horror at all, but I oh, think right. it is. It's 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 still in the Evil Dead trilogy. Um, maybe it kind of depends on how easy you are to scare. Maybe. 
Well, that's the thing. Like, I'm not gonna be strict on this. If if Melanie, you or Jesse, like, if you come to the shows, like, I watch this, I'm like, that's not horror. Get out. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, but maybe I might have to be excited. I could be like, a bird came out of that bush all of a sudden, scared me. I screamed. That's I was a playing. Movie. <laughs> I was playing uh, Minecraft, and a cow yep. fell on me. <laughs> yeah, that's like saying Minecraft is a. I mean, it's a survival uh, game, I guess, but. There's uh, an ender dragon in it, and yep. you go to hell, the nether or whatever. Paul, are you going to say Brightburn? Paul <laughs> asks, oh, no, what's no! not an example? No! No, no, Paul! But how this has worked in the past is uh, viewers, listen, I see, the, I see the view numbers right now. Uh, you, you guys know what, what this is. <laughs> You've seen it before. <laughs> but anybody who comes across this in the future, uh, oh, girls with balls. Oh, God. That doesn't work as a comedy or a horror movie. You're right, Paul. It doesn't work as a movie, I guess. That I've never watched it, but y'all hate it. That movie's bad. I haven't seen it either, but I don't want to. That was watched for the show. I got, but got, Paul watched I don't remember who watched it first, but that was so bad. I was like, no, we're not talking about this on the show. Mm -hmm. um, she also threw out psychological horror, which I really like, so we'll probably throw that in sometime, but... The first up will be comedy horror and viewers, listeners, if you would like, you should also join us in that. Pick something, watch it, hit us up in the chat. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we'll have you join us on the screen. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. But, Ooh. and also it doesn't have to be a horror movie. It can be a horror show. And don't feel like, don't feel like Melanie to where you have to like, well, I didn't watch the whole series. That That's fine. You don't have to watch the whole series. Um, an episode, a couple episodes, or a comic book, or something, something, mm -hmm. anything. A an audio drama. <laughs> an audio drama. That's yeah, yeah. good call. Mm -hmm. Anything like that. May a video game is more. Listen, so long as it gives you something to talk about, and we can like compare how our things. And I think stack up. I think video games are way scarier sometimes than movies because you're oh, yeah. in it and you you know. You know, a cow could fall on your head. They're, you know, what are you going to do? You're immersed. You scream. You're scared. Yeah, I heard somebody talking about that not long ago, and they were talking about, yeah, you're in it. It's more interactive. Mm -hmm. And I would argue also there's stakes. When you yeah. die in a game, it's a pain. Mm -hmm. Some games yeah. make it worse, like a survival game uh, where there's games with permadeath where you die, that save is fried, and you have to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. those are high stakes and you will be terrified the whole time so yeah Some, sometimes you know there's a creepy puppet behind a, a, a poster you know he's gonna jump out you just don't know when mm -hmm. we That's, haven't that happens we haven't done gaming videos for a long time but if you haven't checked out any of our gaming videos hit up our youtube and scroll back to jesse's uh <laughs> Uh, what were they? Um, Bendy and the Ink Machine. Bendy and the Ink Machine videos. Those are a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Watch Jesse play through a game for like the third time and still get hit with the jump scares. Still, still get scared. <laughs> and you can see it because of my hands on the mouse and I go, Gah! <laughs> like the whole thing goes, whoa! Mm -hmm. And I even know it's there. Like I'm trying to creep up there. It was like, it doesn't happen until I get to about, oh my God! <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you try to for you try to like you try to let the viewers know it's coming, and you still yeah. get scared by it. <laughs> Paul says, "I love Grolic Stober. That's not bad. That's not bad. Know. It gives me warm fuzzies." You should go to a doctor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's a, yeah. More man fuzzy. Those are hmm, all signs. right. Hey, Melanie. Oh. Uh, uh, yes, Randy. <laughs> I, can tell, I can tell right now you don't really have anything ready. Uh, uh, anything we should be amazed about, or should we just skip it? Maybe there's nothing to be amazed about. This I'm, sure there's, I'm sure there's so lots. mundane. Everything is so um, mundane. All you have to I, do is go to your Facebook profile. And, I, that's what I'm doing, actually. Yeah. Give me just a second. Uh, well, while you're looking that up, Jesse, you got anything exciting going on? Uh, actually, Grand Comic Con is coming up, oh. and I will actually be tabling in person at Grand Ooh. Comic Con, uh, assuming that the event still goes forward, but it looks like it is. And so I, that's like the first weekend of October, and I'll be there with a uh, super friend of the show, Axton Kaler, and I believe that Paul will also be there with Moose's uh, wood burnings. 
I'm sure he'll be doing podcasty stuff too. Yeah, yeah he says he so. Says he too. says so in in the chat. So you could see you could see the the regulars, the Grawlix yeah, regulars you could see them here. In person. It's weird. I don't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> Except they do come see us. Mm. We're nice sometimes. So. You know, we've been talking about like um, things that are warm and fuzzy, like mm -hmm. a T-shirt. Oh yeah! And I see that there is a brand new super fall themed T-shirt. There from... is, and I will definitely show you that one, and not our most recent shirts, because I wanted to bump the numbers up. So I uploaded a few this week. The fall one is the one you should look at if you mm -hmm. are, especially if you're not of an adult age um where are these okay yes if you go to shirts no if you go to strangers with shirts or strangers with t-shirts go to strangers with shirts.com that'll redirect you to our t public store by the way everything is on sale up to 38 percent off the website is telling me right now limited time won't last forever um let me just go there <laughs> i'm telling you the, you should go quicker. there yeah yeah, let's let's do that. Let's go there. Okay, I have two really good ones for this time of year. The first one is if you know what? If you're a weirdo and you're not particularly into Halloween, but you love fall, you love autumn, and you love pumpkins, maybe even pumpkin spice, but that's not necessary. It's not required. <laughs> get this uh, get this super pimpy pumpkin design sure it's got a it's got a pumpkin and it's in like a 70s stripe gradient style mm -hmm. you can get it in all kinds of different colors i think it looks really nice in black Ooh, a female too. fit you can get you can get hoodies okay oh, wow you can get all mm -hmm. of it it's, it's, it's all the things you can get on your um your hay rack ride wearing mm -hmm. this bad boy in a hoodie mm -hmm. and uh, you'll be festive and warm at the same time you, yep you shouldn't not get on a hay rack ride without this design on a hoodie. Right. <laughs> but if you're if you're more into Halloween, it's basically oh. the same design, but it's jack-o'-lantern style. Same deal, available on all the stuff. Uh, let's click on the hoodie. Hoodies are not not nearly as cheap, that's for sure. No. But that's the cheaper right go. now. Look at that. That's a discount. Thirty-five dollar for a hoodie, that's pretty good. How much is a huge hoodie? Thirty-six dollars for five X. One dollar more for. That's pretty good, actually, from small to five XL. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, retro Draco lantern hoodie. Get that. Strangerswithshirts.com. Hey, we're also on uh, Instagram. I I put stuff up on Instagram a lot. I've discovered that I really enjoy photoshopping uh, promotional material. I guess that's not something that's new, but uh, I like having a good reason to do it. And mm -hmm. we just launched a whole bunch of other shirts on there, but I'm not going to show you <laughs> on <Grawlix. laughs> <laughs> This is kid Fair friendly. And these are definitely the most kid friendly designs we have. Mm -hmm. I feel like you should put like a like a handle on that thing and carry it around. On what? Oh, this? Yeah. yeah. It, it reminds me of the pumpkin, the old pumpkin trick buckets, or treat yeah. buckets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So this one uh, doesn't pale in comparison, though. Ooh, nice. Yeah. I have a couple other Halloween designs um, that are coming up. But this this design, this is most designs uh, originate with Melanie, but the horror ones definitely usually start with me. And this was just a random like, hey, this would be cool. And I threw it together in a day. I was like, that is pretty cool. So it is really um, cool. I've got a couple other. That's not to say it's not a quality design, just because it came together quick, all right? Mm. It's my favorite um, so far. Is it? Yeah. Um, I got a couple other Halloween or horror-related ones coming up, too, so mm. check it out. Hey, Melanie. Yeah. Other than those amazing shirts, what else should we be amazed about? You should be amazed that, you know how people are like, you are what you eat. It's not necessarily that you are what you eat. Well, actually, you kind of are because the atoms replace your atoms, but... More than that, your brain is affected by what you eat because um, they uh, released a study information about how depression, bipolar disorder, and anxiety um, are all linked to a gut bacteria or 
well, both to a gut like uh, one kind of gut bacteria that causes inflammation, and um, also low numbers of another gut bacteria that would kind of help to even that out and reduces inflammation. So you have less of the one that reduces the inflammation and more of the one that causes inflammation. And it it's been known for a little while that that at least depression, if not the other two, definitely is linked to inflammation. Um, and this all makes perfect sense to me. Uh, and I've been saying, it, saying similar things for a long time. Um, so basically, we just need to eat very healthy um, and get all of our good bacterias, a variety of them, you know, all the different colors, whatever. That's how you're supposed to eat. Uh, and you'll be happier and healthier. So, Yeah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. And, and kind of a bummer because it's the whole thing of like diet stuff. It's it's the whole thing of like, yeah, eat healthy, but it's considerably more expensive to eat healthy. It is considerably more without expensive. Without a doubt. And, and not just that, we live in America where everything pretty much is overprocessed. So it's yeah. really hard to even find things that are good for you <laughs> to eat here. But, you know, it's a goal. You can have a goal now. And maybe that will help make you happy until you can, <laughs> you know get the happy bacteria back right you know what this also reminded me of Hmm. blood and guts (laughs) (laughs) it made me think of randomly i'm gonna eat your brains to gain your knowledge um (laughs) like if you what you eat affects your brain Hmm. Mm -hmm. so if you eat other people do you do you get their emotions no, no, just their blood and guts. <laughs> just their yeah. blood and guts. Okay. Blood and guts. Um, anything else before we wrap it up? Okay. Nope. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks everybody for listening. In the future, if Randy actually gets this episode up, um, I've been super busy, I, especially on the weekends. Yeah. So the last episode, the last stream we did two weeks ago, that didn't go up on the podcast feed, and it's mainly because. Even my weekends, I've been I've been seven days a week in it, and I don't like it. But uh, this feels like a pretty good episode, so I want to make sure to try to get this one up on the podcast feed. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so, in the future, people listening, thanks for listening. Is my point. If you want to hear more, go to grawlixpodcast dot com. It's G R A W L I X podcast dot com. We're on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, uh, TikTok. Uh, but I'm sorry, I don't always check that like ever because I don't generally use TikTok. Mm-hmm. So I know I have a notification on there, something about Ben, because I said sent something to Ben and hey Ben, um, hey Clara, what's going on? She always she, always at the end of the show. Tune in at the end of the show. We're happy to have you here. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Better late than never. That's it. I should stop pimping now. So take it easy, everybody. Have a great weekend. Fall is here. It feels like it. Woohoo!